Our students, Brian Proctor, the art teacher, back again with another video. And in the last video, we worked on Act 1, Scene 1, and that is to get you guys to start drawing scenes, you know, instead of just drawing your, your character and just blank, open, white space. I want you guys to learn how to actually draw scenes. So I was giving that some thought, and I said to myself, now, how can I get them to draw scenes when they're still having trouble drawing? So I decided to dial it back a little bit to the very, very beginning, like right before you put your pencil to the paper. This is where the frame of mind you need to be in. This is what you need to be thinking about. And then you put that pencil to the paper because you have that clear frame of mind. You have that clear thought of what you're going to do and it will make it easier to do it. Now I explain a little bit more in the video, but um, yeah, this is going to be for all you guys who are still having trouble drawing because I don't want to just stay in the intermediate to advanced area. I want to basically stay down to where you guys are the beginners because when I was young, I wish I had a found a channel like mine that would show me the beginning of drawing. So I'm going to stay in the beginning and just kind of like lift you up and every video go back down and lift you up just in case somebody found it. A new person finds the video next week. So I don't want to ramble anymore. As I say, I talk about this a little more during the video. So, but one thing before you get started, for all you steady viewers, you guys at least have like, I at least have like about 200 people that just constantly continue to, to, to view my videos. And I want to thank you for those. You are my loyal fans. Um, what is it that you like the most about me teaching? What is it that you want me to teach kind of constantly? Is it the action pose positions? Is it like the drawing things? Is it the perspective? Is it, you know, kind of what I'm doing now? Let me know in the comments. Just take a second and say, I, I would like this. I like this more or that more so that I can continue to do a constant stream of something that helps you guys. I don't want to jump from this one to that one to this one. And I've noticed myself doing that a lot. So, but I want to stay with a steady flow of drawings that help you or steady flow of lessons that's going to help you draw. So enough rambling. Let's get on to the video. Our students, welcome back to another class. So hopefully I should have done an intro. I haven't done it as yet, but hopefully I did it. But just in case, I'm going to go over some of the things that I want to talk about in the intro or from the intro. Now, this is just you know, eye candy, just for you to have something while I'm rambling. What I want to do is I want to go back. Now, I know I'm doing a series on um, doing scenes, but I thought about that and that might be a little too advanced for some people. And ever since I started YouTube, I wanted to basically teach you guys how to draw. Um, you know, I could be drawing Batman every week or, or Superman every week, but I, I never did want that. I wanted to teach you guys how to draw. Let me change this so you can see the next next picture. Um, so what I want to do is I want to kind of go way back. I'm still going to do the scenes, but I want to go way back to the beginning for those who really are having trouble drawing because I was soaking in a hot tub and I was just thinking and I'm saying, you know, what if I couldn't draw, what would I look for on YouTube? What would I be looking for to help me? So it would be something to help me actually draw from the beginning. So that's what I want to do with you guys. I want to go take it all the way back to the very beginning because a lot of times I'll, I'll start these drawings that, you know, do them from the beginning and then I'll take it to more in advanced stage because I'm like to myself, hey, I can already do, do that. So why am I doing that? But I know there's a lot of people out there that are still having trouble drawing from the beginning. So I don't want to go too advanced. I want to stay in the beginning and then advance a little bit as we go. But I want to continue to go and stay at the beginning and then just continue to advance a little more, a little more, a little more. So that's what I want to do with um, this next series. And I'm still going to work out to where we're doing scenes, but I want to teach you from the very, very, very beginning how to understand how to draw and to draw better. I don't know if that's what I'm going to call it, but, you know, I'm going to pretty much do that with this series. All right, so these are just drawings that are um, on my TikTok channel. The ones that you've just seen are not up yet. This one is the latest one. The other ones I'm going to put up, you know, every two days I usually put up a, um, a new drawing on TikTok because, again, I'm trying to teach people to draw better yeah, and that's another one this one's already up as well so 
as I said, this is eye candy. This is the kind of stuff I want you to, to be able to do, you know, eventually before I leave YouTube. I don't know when I'm leaving YouTube, but you know, YouTube might not want me to stay. So I want you guys to see and understand how to draw better. How to draw better, see, it's something like that. I don't know what the title is going to be, something like that. Okay, so the first thing is when you want to draw, I, I, and I don't want you to to have to continue to look at somebody's drawing and draw that. I mean, that is a start, yes, but I want to get you guys to be able to draw your own characters provided you have that uh, drive, you know, and that, that sense to, you know, be able to create your own characters. But if not, I want you to be able to draw what you see and eventually draw what you don't see. But I want to show you how to see it. So I'm looking for my, my, my book. So when you start drawing, when you put a, 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 your paper or your pencil to your paper, the first thing, okay, let's go back again. When you show me a picture, say if you drew a picture, you draw a picture of something and you, you, you give it to me, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at it, okay? I'm going to look at the picture, how you drew it, okay? So that's the first thing. So when I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it from, how can I say this? That angle that you drew it, okay? So before I crack this book open, let's do this. Whenever you draw, you want to have your eye line. Your eye line is wherever your eyes are. So if I'm looking at you, this is me. And I'm looking at you. This is where my eye line is going to be. So when you draw, when I look at the picture, I'm going to look at that picture from my point of view, my perspective, my eye line. But you, when you, so when you draw that picture, I'm going to look at this picture. I'm looking down. My eye line is above because I'm looking down. So anytime you see something, and I don't want to use a standard box, I'm going to say, I'm going to do a cylinder. Okay. It might be easy to break up. If I'm looking at the cylinder right here, this is me. Looking at this cylinder, right there. Okay, I'm looking at the center of that cylinder. So I cannot see the bottom, I cannot see the top, I'm seeing the center, all right? So if I'm looking more at the top, I'm going to see more like this. I'm gonna see the top. If I shift my eye line above it, okay? This is my eye line here. So I'm now looking down at this cylinder. So if I do it from the bottom, my eye line is going to be down here, and I'm looking at the top, uh, the bottom. I'm looking up at the bottom of it. So whenever you draw your picture, that's what you have to think about. I can't change my eye line. Remember, my eye line is up here somewhere. I'm looking down on top of the paper, so I'm above this paper. But when I see your picture, you draw your picture from that um, perspective point that you want me to see it. Now, because I can see under her that means my eye line is down here somewhere i'm looking up at her i'm looking up at, at wolverine as well so they decided to draw this picture with their eye with, with the viewer's eye line down here so that's something you have to think about whenever you draw now let's go through this book just, just a few flip a couple couple pages this thing is pretty much new you don't see too many wrinkles or creases in this thing so this is like number one x-men wildcat golden age number one and this is, what is this guy's name? I love this guy's style. I love this guy's style. Okay, so there's a lot of glare because I've got my glasses on. So I'm looking at this. So my eye line, because I cannot see the top of either one of these guys' head, nor can I see like the bottom because number one, he shut the bottom off. So my eye line is right, probably right about right here somewhere. So kind of the same with this here. I can, I, I can kind of see, but he's short. Wolverine is short. This guy is uh, tall, but I'm not looking down on top of their shoulders. So that eye line is somewhere around here. Now, an another good thing when you can tell by looking at any picture is anything that's square in the room. I'm trying not to write in this thing. I'm sure this thing probably costs a couple, couple, couple dollars. Um, you know, you're seeing over top of it because I'm seeing the bottom, the top of this chair. I'm looking at the, the seat of the chair, but I'm looking down at it. So as I say, my eye line is probably up here somewhere. Now, you can draw this. Let me, let me draw this chair real quick. 
So the chair is, this is a rough, okay, look at your paper now, Brian. This is a rough of a chair. Let's say like this. This is the angle of that chair, okay? Now, if I take this back, any two points going back, any two sides going back, that's where your eye line is going to be at because I'm seeing down at the top of the bottom, the top of the bottom of the chair. I'm seeing the top of the seat of the chair. Let's go through. I mean, I love this guy's work. His pencils and inks is just like phenomenal, phenomenal. And I liked him because he drew Wolverine the size that Wolverine really is. Wolverine is a little short, short kind of cat. So, okay, now, again, I, got to, I have to look at the monitor because when I look down at the actual paper, there's a lot of glare. So, I'm looking down because I'm seeing the top of the steps. I'm seeing the top of her head. I'm seeing her shoulders if, you, if she didn't have the little cloak on. So I'm saying, I, I'm going to say the eye line is somewhere up here. So as I said, whenever you draw, that's going to be going to want to be the first thing that you think about. How am I going to draw this so that people can see this? Again, I would say, I would say, I would say right about here. Because a lot of people, when you first draw, when we first draw something, let me grab a picture. We tend to draw, you know, right in somewhere at chest height or, or stomach height. Because that's just, anytime somebody really draws, a, a, um, what do you call those shots, the, the, the shot, the big shot, they'll usually draw it right there. So you're right there with that person. You're right there in there. They don't want you over it. They don't want you um, below it. They want you to be right there, just like this one. You're right here with Wolverine shooting that gun, okay? Now let's stop and let's go to um, something else I wanted to talk about being above or below something now if i drew something i'm trying to think of something 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 i don't know what something to do that okay so the three positions above let's say face to face and below also can bring emotion and it's a type of an emotional reaction when you draw that if i draw i don't know what let's just say let's just say I don't know, it's just quick, quick. I really want to kind of put it in, in front, but it would be hard to put it in front for you to understand what I'm doing. Especially when I forget how to draw. So, okay, let's just say this is a gun. This is a gun. I'm going to put it more right in your face. Okay, so this is a gun. Just say finger, 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 thumb, and the gun is right here. So my eye line is right here. Okay, so that gun is now in my face. As I say, if I learn how to draw, <laughs> then that's gonna make me feel like, oh, you know, I'm I'm in this. Oh, this guy's pointing this gun right at me. Now, if I drew this from above, so let's just say from above way from above so this is the gun this is this is whoa, that's bad that's really bad brian this is thumb this is the gun this is the hand this is the arm this is the gun and he's shooting the gun let's just say he's shooting the gun okay now i'm above this thing with this terrible gun drawing so I feel nothing. I'm just a viewer looking at this thing, you know, being shot. Now, if the thing is above me, I know it's just like, yay, come on now. Can you draw this thing? Two, three. Here's my thumb. Here's the palm of my hand. Here's my uh, wrist. This is the trigger guard. I'm below this, you know, it, it could be like menacing. Like, it could be like, okay, get down, let me let me shoot. You know, this, because it, I'm below it, I, it has more power than me, it's greater than me, it's bigger than me, it's higher than me. So those are the three positions you have to think about when you draw something. Do I want it to be above? Do I want it to be in your face? Or do I want it to be below? And again, again if I drew a square like this, I am below that square, so that square is above me, it's greater than me, I can't reach that square because it's floating higher than me. If I do it the other way around, 
I'm above that thing. Um, I can, you can say I have more power than I, you know, uh, it's, it's below me, you know, cause I'm looking at the top, but if it's like right here, just say this, you know, then, you know, Hey, that thing belongs to me. It's right there. It's right in my face. You know, for some reason it's, it's right there. Forgive my sorry hand drawings, but you understand what I'm saying. So when you draw a picture, those are the things you have to think about. Where is my eye line going to be? What type of reaction do I want? the viewer to have with that picture let me grab another picture just because and i say i drew, a lot of these i just kind of drew just to draw you know without thinking after a while you know you, you you don't really think about things like okay where am i going to put the thing so you know you got it a little below her around about there because you're looking under the arm you got the hand coming to you so that's kind of like almost in her face you know except she's reaching over to the side Versus reaching like at me, so just you're just a little below that um, character. All right, so we've got those three. Remember, go back from the beginning. If you want to draw something, you're going to have to know where do I want the, my the character, the the viewer eye line to be at because I want to invoke what type of emotion. I want the person to be right there. Where's my guy? Where's my little guy at? I want the person to be right there. In his face, I want the person to be, you know, above me, more menacing, or I want to be completely out of the scene. I want to be neutral, so I want to be floating at the top of everything, looking down, just being a witness. Uh, it doesn't bother me. He got shot. He got robbed, whatever. I'm looking down at him. He doesn't know I exist because I'm, I'm floating up here. Or I could be like down below. Oh, he's going to trample me. I can see everything is happening. You know, these guys got more power than me. So you think about that when you decide to draw whatever you want to draw. So just because I've got that book, let's just turn a couple more pages. Just do a couple more pages. And then you can kind of tell where your eye line is, is just by quickly. If you can see the top of it, then you know you're above it. If you can see the bottom of it, you know you're below it. Looking at this, this is probably right here because I cannot see the top of that box, nor can I see the bottom of that box. It's going to be right here because a little below, because I cannot see the top, but well, more in the middle here, more in the middle there, and will not be able to see the bottom either. And any kind of furniture or something in the room is where you can tell. Again, kind of like eyeliner is going to be in the middle. Right about here, same thing. Mm, about here. You can kind of see under under her. You can't see the top of her shoulders. So that you that can take the place of a box shoulders. If you if you do a person, if you think about drawing a person, <sighs> person, just say the person is the box, okay? Because I cannot see the top of this person's shoulders, I'm going to be down here somewhere. I'm not going to be down because I can't see the bottom of his feet. But I'm going to be low because of the shoulders, period. I was going to add something else, but I can't do that. So if you look at things, objects, as more squares, I don't care if it's flat. If it's got some flat to it, just think of it as a box. And it's easy to draw because as in the beginning, I always say, learn to draw your shapes. Then learn to turn and twist your shapes, and then learn to manipulate your shapes. Then you can draw because every everything is a shape. This body is a shape. I can start manipulating some curves into here, and it'll still be a body. So this is a box, and of course, because you can see the bottom of it, you know your eye line is down, and you're looking up at it. Okay, looking for something square. You know, I can see the bottom of this floor, so. I'm about right here above it. Yeah, yeah. I, I was getting mixed up. When I think too hard in perspective, I get I get mixed up. Perspective is easy because you can see the top of the roof. So that means I'm not up here. So I'm about right down here somewhere. I'm just seeing the top of that box. So here's my box. I'm just going to see. I'm going to go back a little bit. Just barely the top of it versus seeing a lot more of the top of that box like that. So it, it varies your angle. So I'm way up here. So as I say, and this is one point of perspective, all you have to do if you see a box that goes back, find where they connect, and that's where your eye line is going to be. So if this goes back right here, right here, this is where your eye line is going to be. 
my computer just, camera just did something. Hopefully it's still running. All right, let's go through this again and then we'll work on drawing something. A couple more pages. As I said, I love this guy's or I love his inking style. I mean, he, he, he draws so well and inks so well. He doesn't really even need color. They did color some of his books, but you know, I just liked his style. All right, again, pinup. That's what I'm trying to say. Or splash page. If you draw a splash page, you usually put it right somewhere in the middle because you don't want to be over top or below unless you unless you decide to do that or the script calls for that. So, all right, so now we're going to close again. We got him in the middle. Wolverine is kind of low, so I would say about right here. So you want to decide, okay, I'm going to draw this picture. Um, where am I going to have my eye line? So go pick up a book, you know, a comic book, and just look at it and then see, you know, where, um, where your eye line is at. So drawing a picture, as I say, a picture, everything is a shape. Everything is a shape. I was going to do something with boxes, but it just, it just ran away from me. But as I was saying, the rooms, let me see if I've got this, this, this newspaper thing again. I've used it several times, but it's really a good, a good um, thing to use. Let's find a bigger room, something I had to mark in already. <laughs> okay, well, let's start out with the couch first. You know, when you draw this, or when you draw this, if you look at that, it's just basically a box, okay? This is going to go back. This arm is going to go back. Let's see if I can get darker. Here's your box. I'm just going to draw it a little bigger. Here's my box right there, okay? So this arm right here is going to go back. This arm right here is going to go back. And they're going to keep going back until they, they meet. There. And then here is your eye level right there because you're seeing the top here and you're seeing the top here so you're above that thing all right not too far above it because you can't see too much of the top of this you, because it's curved you're probably going to see this is probably just much of the top as you see right there so if you have a room you can take any piece of furniture so this is going to be like two point perspective let's go back let's take this piece here let's see if i got something lighter light furniture Light furniture, light furniture. Can you see the yeah? Like I said, everything I see has glare to it. So you're looking at this couch or even the table, and you're gonna go back. Let's say the back of the couch. Where's the back of the couch? The back of the couch is like right here. So it's gonna go back until that touches, and then there is your your eye line. So when they took the picture of this, they said, okay, we want to get it from up here. Have that camera up here so you can take that picture so you can see down on top of this furniture right here. Same thing with the table. It should go back to that same point. Same thing with this table. It should, everything should line up. Now sometimes every now and then like this, this chair down here. Let me let you look at that for a little more, a little, a little while longer before I keep jumping. Like this chair here, they'll say, they'll take this and they'll put this, they'll turn this, but it'll still go to the same line. Let's just do this. Let's say this is going to go back and this is going to go back like that. So that line is going to be right here. Everything else should line up to that line. So, but it's not going to be on that point. It's going to be uh, on another point. You can have multiple points of um, vanishing points. And I'm sorry, I cannot see. This is so much glare on this paper because I was going to do something else. Let's do this chair. This chair is going to go here and here. So it's still going to be on that line, but it's going to be another point right here. This table right here. Remember, this is the line. This table right here is going to go here and here. So this is going to be on that point right there. So you can have a, a line, your eye line, with multiple vanishing points. So I can have this vanishing point right there. So I'm going to come up here. So here's my box. Okay, let's just do that. Here's my box right here. So I can have one here. So here's my box right here. Of course, this is going to be three point or two point perspective like that. Uh, I can have it going way over here from here. And I'm going to turn it this way. Of course, again, it's going to be three point perspective down. A two-point perspective, I'm sorry. 
like that. So yeah, that's a whole new thing. But if you find one piece of furniture in your in a drawing or in a photo or something, you can always find out where that vanishing point is going to be by taking two lines and putting it together and wherever they touch, then you know that's where it is. So that's another thing that you need to know when drawing. But a lot of times when we draw, in drawing we want to draw that, that cool superhero and we're not really thinking about where any points or anything is uh, like that is going to be. But eventually when you're drawing a scene, you're going to have to find out or know kind of like instinctively where your vanishing points are going to go so that you can, and as you see, I'm breaking up when I'm trying to draw. I guess that's why people do voiceovers on a lot of their things so that you can know where everything is going to go. So because I cannot really see this person's shoulders, I'm going to say it's going to be somewhere down here, my vanishing point. Vanishing point, my, my um, eye line is going to be down here. So if I put any kind of furniture or anything in here, if you need to just do something, you know, do your, do your lines first. If you want to do something, put furniture in there. Say this, 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 bottom. Okay, anytime you know it's going to be standing and you want something right by that person, then you have to have that on that same standing line. So this box is going to be here. It's weird box. It's weird. It's a different angle, right there. So just find wherever. Say like he's standing here. So I want to put this box a little further back. So I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to use this point. I'm going to come here and here. Say this could be the bottom. This is going to be the bottom because this is the line where I want him to what it what, want it to stand on. It's going to be like this. And I'm going to take this point back here. And I'm going to take this point back here. And it's going to go up and it's going to go across. So this is an easy way to put objects in a room or on the floor where somebody is at. If his feet, you know, you know where his feet is. Like I said, if you want to put somebody next to him, you want to put his feet. I'm just going to make a small person because I'm out, out, out of room. A small person right here on that same line. He could be a child. You know, but his feet got, has to go on the same line. If I want to put somebody behind him, then I'll find out, okay, where do I want to put that person? And his feet are going to go there. And because I guess this is going to go up. Yeah, this is going to go up. This person probably going to be taller than him because it's, everything is going kind of going back in line in his feet. Unless you just want it smaller. Let's just say this. Uh, let's just do, do what I did with that one. His feet are going to go on that line. So he's behind that guy. Unless you're going to put everything like on a sloped angle where you're going to be looking down at the person, then the other guy has to be higher. Then the next guy back there has to be higher. Has to be higher. This is usually the head doing something like this, they'll do a triangle. If you ever see a pinup or the splash page and you have the group, they always put them on a triangle. Like he's behind him. I can put this guy a little in front of him. So the foot line is going to be here, but I'm going to put the head here and the feet are going to go there. So whenever you draw a rough, just do this little box. Do this box, square like that. Then bring the legs up. So you're just doing the letter A. As far as you, you want to bring the legs up, and then you can do the arms. So after that, once you get that, then you can do this. And I, I've taught this in all my videos. Go back and look at an old video. You do your chest or your torso, center line, the tunnel, uh, collarbone, delts. So I'm going to do my, my, my uh, waist, my hips, and then your legs. So from that little... All right, for some reason, my camera cut off on me. I don't know why. It just did, so I don't know where. At this point, I don't know where it cut off at. I'll, I'll find out in editing. So I'm going to go back over this again, where I, hopefully before it cut off so you can actually explain it. So from just doing this little square, I'm going to mess it up now. From just doing this little box, I can make a body 
from this thing right here. By going back over it, I'm doing the torso, center line, I'm gonna do the waist, which is as I call a tuna can because it's just this, that tuna can or hockey puck. And then I'm gonna do the upside down house for the um, hips. You know, my center line is gonna come all the way down and then my legs are gonna fit right here. And I'm gonna do the collarbone, at the top of the collarbone, we have the delts. And of course, you have your your arms, which is the top. The bicep, tricep is just an oval and a cone for the other part. And see, this is breaking it down to its most simplest, simplest points. So this, and then I have the cone right here. An oval and then a cone, and I'll bring it this way. So from just by using this, you can have the body. Now, I'm going to end this in a few seconds because I don't know how long the first part was because it cut off on me. So, if I'm doing a rough sketch, rough sketch, and this is getting back into the body, and um, I want the person to be bent over or something, especially when I'm doing comic books and doing something rough, I'll just use this right here, like that, just bent over, okay? So, this is a, the, the entire body, no arms and legs, and then I'll just say I want a leg here and maybe a leg going back here. So, then again... This, this thing is just doing something weird. I, I keep looking up and it's jumping. So now I'll still do the oval. I'll do the uh, waist. And then I will do the upside down house. So this is going to be my line. And because he's leaning over, your collarbone is going to take the shape of that V like that. Let me pull back, pull down some because I know it's at the very top of the thing. So then, of course, always you have your arms, which are going to be right here, which is the oval and then the cone again circle for your delts cone um usually i'll i'll just do cylinders you know but for those beginners and you're having trouble doing a cylinder just do an oval so i'm just going to do cylinders and then i'm going to do the cone remembering everything is round so if you make everything round or just put round lines on it it kind of rounds it back out so that when you're putting everything else on, like the, the muscles and so forth, you'll know that it makes it look more rounder. Even though it was flat, it's now round. You round it off. And then here goes my part of my leg, which is just another oval. Oval? Yeah. And then here's a cone right there. So again, oval, cone right there. And then you just chop it off where you want to put the foot. Right there. And then chop it off where you want to put the hand. Chop it off where you put the hand. It's very simple. And then you you, you have your, your your neck at this at the bottom of this V is where you want to put your neck. Or should I say your neck hole? <laughs> and then put your head there because your, your neck is going to go right down to that hole. So you have this upper part of your shoulders. Here is your collarbone. This this is your traps and this is your delts. Yeah, I try to use the um the names of these things so when you when you start drawing you'll know because a lot of, a lot of professional comic book artists draw but they can't tell you the names of the, the body parts they know the bicep tricep you know but you know calf knee or whatever but a lot of them will tell you I, I don't know I just draw so yeah easy to draw just use those shapes for however just and uh, somebody used to call it like the piece of gum chewing gum you bend it you flex it like that and again Oval, since this is bent up, this guy's going to be looking up. His head is going to be here. He could be looking up. You have your, that little, that, that tuna can is what I just, that's just what I call it, tuna can, which is your waist and then your hips. Because for the longest time, I keep getting the waist and the hips mixed up. I don't know why. And then there's the opening right there for your, which is going to a cave or you call it the tunnel or the cave for your abs. And then, of course, again, collarbone since this guy's leaning back his collarbone is going to be right up here and then you have your oval and then you have your cone so again it's going to be here I have my oval here since we're seeing here since we're seeing so much here and less there you're not going to see the arm too much and you have your little cone right here and you have your fist here and you have his legs here and he's doing like that power up or maybe he's just mad and screaming at the world so as we go along, I'm going to continue to show you how simple it is to understand and draw. I don't know what the title is going to be, but it's somewhere, around, somewhere like that. 
understanding, you know, and then putting your scene in. So, again, because I cannot see his shoulders, he's leaned over. I'm going to say somewhere like this. Okay, now, again, what, what I did in the beginning with this, uh, 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 it all works out. With this, you seeing this, you seeing the top of this and the bottom of this, because here is my waist. Remember, this is the waist. So, his waist is curved like that. So, if I go all the way around, I'm seeing the top of this. So, I'm my, my I'm seeing top of this, yeah. So, I'm going to be somewhere here. I'm not going to be high up here because I cannot see the top of the shoulder. But I'm high enough here to I can see that point there. So, that's another way you can figure out how, where your line is. And remember, from that line, you can put furniture or whatever you choose I'm gonna just go up this is easier for me because my brain is dying right now <laughs> furniture or whatever you choose in that in that um, environment so if this is foot is here the other foot is here and say this is where I want if I'm gonna place other things I mean this could be the bottom of the ground way down here somewhere you know and all of this again is you see this I'm looking down on top of this the same way I'm looking down on top of this guy because if I put a belt, if you put a belt on somebody, it's the same thing. Is his belt, is his whatever pockets in his jeans, whatever. So if you take that belt and you loop it around, you say, okay, so I'm seeing the top of that. So my eye line is above that. So if you look at a lot of characters, a lot of um, drawings and so forth, you'll see they always have belts and straps and so forth. And you can just use that as well as your tuna can or your hockey puck or your cylinder or whatever you want to, want to call it. Not a cylinder, Brian, like this. That's your, I, so I just call it a tuna can. I think I was making some tuna one day, and then I just decided to call it a tuna can. So my camera's blinking in and out again, so I want to end it right here. So continue to come back, and uh, I think I asked a question in the beginning, or I will ask a question in the beginning. Of all, of all the things that I've been drawing, I've been switching up from this and that and that, what is it, if I could just draw one thing like um, action pose positions or comic stuff, what would you like to see because I have at least about a hundred and some maybe 200 loyal um, viewers that every time I put a video up I at least get that many views so you are the loyal ones so you are the ones I'm asking this question to if I could only draw one thing constantly in every video what would that thing be would it be just teaching like I'm doing now or you want the action post positions or you want me to do you know superheroes or how to whatever just tell me what you would like to do or say this is what I'm having trouble with, or this is what I would like to draw more of. So hit me up on the comments, and then I will get back with you guys in the next video, continuing as where we left off, how to draw, how to see it, how to understand it, and how to become a better artist. I haven't figured out the title yet, but I will. All right, later.